capping off UFC Vegas 37, we have a couple of light heavyweight bangers. And in the co-main event, Iwan Kutsalaba, the Hulk, is going to be taking on Brown Bear, Devin Clark. In a battle of attrition, maybe you could say that one. Because for Iwan Kutsalaba, you look at it in the five on in. He's one and three with a draw. And that draw was the Dustin Jacoby's last time out. And in that fight, he had a 10-8 first round. And then in round two and round three, Dustin Jacoby was able to take over because Iwan Kutsalaba is a one-hitter quitter. He's a one-round guy. And after that, he usually gets tired and he starts to fall off a cliff. And that's what happened when he fought Dustin Jacoby. If I can boil it down to its simplest facet. Now, he has a great opportunity in those first rounds to put on really impressive performances. And maybe not withstanding, but a guy that has very good finishing power. His last win was over Khalil Roundtree. He finished him. And then you look at some of the losses, and they're against very high-level competition. Again, five on in speaking, he lost to Glover Teixeira. He lost to Magomed Ankalaev twice because he got finished in both of those fights. When he played chicken, when he definitely didn't play chicken. And for Devin Clark, the five on in, a little bit more generous. He beat Darko Stuzic, made it boring. He lost to Ryan Spann by submission. He beat Daquan Townsend. He beat Alonzo Menafield. Made it. Now, that was an exciting fight. His dad was oh, rooting for enough. him. He went down, like... That was that was a good fight. That really was. And then he lost to Anthony Smith in a three-round main event where he got submitted in the first round. And Anthony Smith is a tricky guy, especially if you're dry. Now, Matt, I'm going to leave the puns, the jokes, and the rhymes out of it. I'm going to pass it on over to you. If we're talking about pure finishing ability, I don't think it's crazy. Iwan Kutsalab is your guy. A lot of people had him to beat Ankalaev in the second fight. They said we were nuts. They were stupid. Devin Clark is continuing to get better at what he's already good at. I think we can say that. He's good at wrestling to get into the clinch, to get you down on the mat, to rinse and repeat. And that's how Devin Clark has won in the UFC. I mean, what's his most marquee win doing it that way? Well, any of those three? Maybe when he beat Jeremy Kimball? Here's the thing about Devin Clark. He did go balls to the wall one time. It just so happened it was against Alexander Rakic. And I don't know if you've been following this division very much, but Rakic is near the top of it. He drops Rakic with like this weird back fist and then Rakic comes back and knocks him out. But he did have an exciting fight and he did go out there looking for a finish. It just wasn't really against a guy who you should fight that type of a style with. Devin Clark's a really interesting character because going into the Anthony Smith fight, I, I can pat myself on the back a little bit. I said, this feels like one of those fights where a contender is fighting an unranked guy and it's like, okay, you might not be able to beat the top guys of your division, but you're better than this guy. And I still kind of feel the same way about Devin Clark. Like, Devin Clark in that fight kind of proved to me that he isn't a ranked fighter. And I, I know Anthony Smith's really good. He's getting another main event. This is nothing against Anthony Smith. But my point is that when Devin Clark had the biggest opportunity of his career, the first main event slot of his career against by far the biggest name he's ever fought, he didn't show up at all. He looked really, really bad and gets submitted basically instantly in that fight. And it was really disappointing because if you just look at Devin Clark's skill set, he could beat Anthony Smith in a three-round fight. If you hold Anthony Smith down, very much like Alexander Rakic did, you can beat him that way. And I know Anthony Smith's tricky off of his back, but where Anthony Smith has the majority of his successes, I'm in top position, I'm raining down ground and pound, and then after I weaken you up, then you give me your back, I choke you out. Look at the Alexander Gustafson win. That was a very similar, uh, or that was how he won that one. Il Kutalaba is interesting because they bring up his wrestling background. Oh, he wrestled. Oh, he wrestled. He gets taken down a lot, though. It's just really weird. It's kind of like Yuval Romero. He gets taken down, but he does have a really good ability to get back up to his feet. But we have seen limitations to that. Like, Jared Cannonier was able to take him down, but he got up pretty much instantly as a result of it. We saw in the Glover Teixeira fight, okay, you can hold Kutalaba down if you are one of those top, top tier fighters. And that's really the big question mark in this fight. Can Devin Clark take down and hold down Ion Kutalaba? I think he can do it once. He could probably even do it twice. But is two times enough to win him this fight by decision? Because I don't even think Kutalaba can win this fight by decision or by finish. Because the weird thing about Kutalaba is if he hurts Devin Clark early in this fight, I think it's the worst thing that can happen to him. He's going to go in there. He's going to look to finish him. And in classic Devin Clark fashion, like, yeah, I know I might not say Devin Clark's at the top tier of this division, but what do we know about Devin Clark? He's fairly durable. It's not like he just goes down by one big shot. And he has good cardio for the light heavyweight division. And back in 2017, when it was like the Hulk, Ion Kutalaba, maybe I thought he would win this fight, but I don't really think we've ever really seen his skills progress since then. I go, I always go back to Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons has always been good. 
But do you want to just be good for your entire career, or do you want to actually make that jump to great? Kutalaba felt like he was on that path, but he was never really able to make that jump and really become a contender in this division. Which is weird, because, I mean, for Clark, yeah, he's trained at some different gyms and so on and so forth. For Kutalaba, he's been at Extreme Couture for a little bit now. We'll have to see how that pl pays dividends. For Clark, though, I don't know. I mean, if, as far as durability, he got knocked out by Alex Nicholson. He got submitted by Jan Blahovic. He got knocked out by Rakic. He got submitted by Span. He Submission. got submitted by Smith. He Submission gets finished. Have to do with durability, though. He just gets finished. And for Kutsalaba, again, got finished by Ankolaev once, kind of twice. Finished by Teixeira. Beat by Decision Cannoneer. Finished by Serkinov. Uh, illegal strikes against Andrazic, so that doesn't count. But when I look at this, yeah... Can Clark get him down, hold him down? Can he do it effectively enough in the first round? Because if he can, then he can do it in the second round. He can definitely do it in the third round. So I look at the odds for this one. Kutsalaba open at minus 105. He's minus 144. Devin Clark open at minus 115. He's a plus 119 over on best fight odds. For the topology votes, wow. 1,103 total votes. 72% Kutsalaba. 77% by knockout. For the 28% that have Clark, 76% by decision. And that's it. Clark's been finished. Kutsalaba finishes, guys, especially early. And listen, Clark's been finished early. I can see that's where the fan trend is. That's also where the odds are. Oddly enough, we haven't really set it up that way. So what are you thinking as far as this because one's concerned? durability and submission defense are not tied together at all. And that's something we have to say right now. Devin Clark's not out here getting starched by jabs. He's getting submitted by Glover to Knocked out by Alex Nicholson. And Alexander Rakic. One of the most dangerous men in the division, probably in all the UFC. I just don't think Clark losing by submission means very much in a fight against Ian Kutalaba. That's why I like Devin Clark in this fight. I actually think he's the much better wrestler in this. Although, this is something that the commentary is going to say. They're going to bring up Kutalaba's wrestling background. I care about how you fight in the cage more than what your background is. When I think of Ian Kutalaba, I don't think of him doing, like, weird folk-style takedowns from the clinch. I understand he has those in his back pocket, but until you actually go out there and start out grabbing other top level UFC fighters I just can't really believe in it I don't think he can go out there and get the takedown against a guy like Devin Clark who's shown in the past that not only is he a good defensive wrestler he's a great offensive one too but the problem Clark has is he can leave his head open to be guillotined that's not a that's not a tactic that I think Kutalaba can uh uh take advantage of and I do like Devin Clark as the underdog in this one I really do Kutalaba went 8 of 11 for takedowns against Dustin Jacoby in his last fight in the first round where he 10-8 in him Didn't he, get he looked tired. amazing and then he got tired. So can he finish Devin Clark in the first round? Sure he can, but I don't have him to do it that way. I really think Devin Clark's going to just outlast him, win a decision. It might not be the most entertaining. It will be in the first round. You're going to hold your breath. But I have Devin Clark in this fight. I, I Listen, either guy could have a good day. But to me, I like the value in Clark as the underdog. So both of us going with Devin Clark in this one. Let us know down below. Do you have the guy from Moldova in Iwan Kutselaba? Are you going with Jackson Wink, Sanford MMA's own Devin Clark to get the win? Love the fight and our main event. A lot of ties there. Anthony Smith taking on Ryan Spann. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.